Steve, it's great to have you back. Congratulations on this. You know, I was thinking back to the time where we were asking, what's it going to take to rescue the cereal category? But now anyone wants to talk about is uh, North America's rebound. Yeah, thanks, Carl. Great being with you again. And it is quite a rebound in cereal. I mean, when you look at the way the category has done on a year-to-day basis, it's up, you know, mid-single digits. The last quarter, it was up high single digits. Last four weeks, it was up double digits. And I think it speaks to the versatility of cereal as a meal. It speaks to the affordability of cereal as a meal. You know, you can have a bowl of Special K with berries and a glass of milk for about a dollar. So the category is great, and our recovery is coming along ahead of schedule. So we're very pleased about that. As far as input costs, you know, we've been watching like some of these futures on oats and wheat and soybeans. I mean, oats down four out of five weeks. Is it reasonable to think about it as commodity costs are coming in, but it's the bottleneck pain that remains? It's the bottleneck pain surely remains. And it really hasn't, uh, it hasn't gotten better. It, it has stopped getting worse, but that still remains a challenge for us. In terms of the commodity prices, they are down, but they're down off historic highs. So on a year over year basis, it's still a very inflationary environment. We don't really see a let up. And as we look into next year, it's going to remain a challenge. Uh, and obviously, it's going to remain a challenge for us to make sure that we work on our productivity plans, we work on our revenue growth management plans. And overall, we work to make sure that we continue to provide foods that are affordable for strapped uh, consumer budgets. Does, does that mean you can continue to take some price here? Or are we going to get into a period where it, it's more about share battles and uh, the worries about losing to private label and so forth? Well, I think when you look at private label, it, it really hasn't made any meaningful differences in our categories. But we are very mindful of the gap and we're very mindful of affordability. But I do think that inflation will continue. Productivity can only give so much. And we're still seeing these you know, record high year over year input cost uh, inflations. And so, you know, we don't see a break on the horizon yet. So I think it's going to be it's going to be a continuation of what we're seeing. And, you know, we, we as hard as we work to mitigate it you know, right now, the inflationary environment is still real and pervasive. Yet you're raising your guidance for 2022 organic sales of seven to eight percent. What gives you so much confidence right now, Steve? We're obviously also reacting to what we heard from Walmart cutting 200 jobs and also slashing its outlook last week. Yeah, Seema, so we've been for, for years now investing in our brands. We've got very strong brands. And the confidence that we have is because as we look around the world, you know, the United States and our international regions, our growth is being led by terrific performance in our big brands. Pringles is up double digits in virtually all of our big markets around the world. Cheese it is up double digits, Rice Krispies treats. And so these are brands that we've invested in that resonate with consumers that have strong consumer connections. And in a, an environment like we see today right now, people want affordable luxuries. People don't want to deprive themselves of things that they love that are quite affordable. And as I already mentioned, cereal as a meal is versatile and affordable. So we're the beneficiary of having great brands that we've invested in that are very affordable and are, are comfort in times of, uh, you know, times of challenge. The price sensitivity and the uneasiness of the consumer, Steve, how does it compare in Europe right now uh, to, to North America? Yeah, it's a little bit more uh, acute in Europe right now, particularly in continental Europe. So we are seeing a little bit more of a, you know, a return to historical elasticities as prices go up, you know, volume comes down. We're not seeing that in North America. We're not seeing that in uh, the rest of our international businesses. So the one area where it has returned not quite to normal levels yet, but but is approaching it is continental Europe. And it's really not a surprise because if you look at continental Europe historically, you know, nobody's seen this type of inflation for decades, many decades. But for a long time, uh, continental Europe was more of a deflationary environment. So it's, it's quite a jarring effect when the when they see the type of inflation that they're seeing today. You're clearly an international brand. You go to India, everyone's eating Kellogg's cereal. But I'm curious, as these FX headwinds persist, does that make the sales from emerging markets uh, less meaningful to your bottom line? I wouldn't say they're less meaningful uh, at all, but we clearly have a translation impact when we when we bring those uh, foreign currencies back into the U.S. And so that's a that's a bit of a headwind. But despite that, you know, we raised guidance and that is one of the headwinds that we're facing 
is obviously, you know, you have the euro, you have the pound, you have international currencies, which have actually held up better. Developing market currencies have held up better than the euro and the pound. But it is clearly something that in the back half of the year uh, will affect any company with an international footprint. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.